thank you very much. I'm uh, very glad to have uh, the opportunity to participate in this uh, seminar and, well, to explain what these uh, things appearing in the title are, I will start uh, very far away. I will start with an old theorem of tango, which goes back to 1974. In that period, uh, tango was working, uh, his aim was to construct in the composable vector bundles of, of low rank on the projective space. Well, he succeeded, he, he constructed the so-called tango bundles. But uh, in, uh, in his uh, work towards the construction of these bundles, he studied uh, morphisms from the projective space to the Grassmannian, uh, to a Grassmannian. And I'm uh, interested not in the morphism, uh, well, when you have morphisms, but in a result which says that under certain assumptions you don't. And which is this theorem, which says that if you take a projective space, PM, and any Grassmannian uh, are using the projective notation, so my GRN is R dimensional linear spaces in PN. And so if you take any Grassmannian of another projective space of smaller dimension, then there is no way to map PM to this Grassmannian except uh, the trivial uh, cases of the constant morphisms. <clears throat> and I will also uh, have a look at the proof of this result because, well, it's inspiring in uh, many ways. Well, the proof is, is, not, uh, is not difficult. We just consider the incidence variety of points and linear spaces. This variety has a projective bundle structure over the Grassmannian. This is the projectivization of a well-known bundle on the Grassmannian, which is called the universal quotient bundle. Well, we know everything about this bundle. In particular, uh, I want to mention that his first chern class is the ample generator of the Picard group of the Grassmannian. And uh, there is an exact sequence in which uh, this bundle sits with a trivial bundle in the middle. And there is another bundle S, which is called the universal subbundle, but well, it's not that important uh, uh, who these bundles are, except for the, the thing that I said about the determinant of Q. So you have this sequence on the Grassmannian. And from the fact that this sequence is, is exact, you can uh, compute the Chern polynomial of the guy in the middle as the product of the Chern polynomials of the other two guys. So you get this uh, equality of Chern polynomials. And well, the idea is that you pull back the bundles and you get uh, a similar uh, equality in the projective space. So assume you have a morphism from the projective space, uh, pull back the bundles, pull back the chain classes. Well, when you pull back uh, the chain classes, the, the chow ring of PM is very simple. Everything in codimension I is a multiple of the hyperplane class to the I. So you get just uh, a number times uh, the uh, correct power of the hyperplane class. So you do this for the two bundles, then you have the same relation, you, uh, you write the same relation, and what you get is an equality of polynomials on which on one side you have one, and on the other side you have polynomial like this, I'm calling D and D the maximum integers for which the pullback is non-zero. And now uh, the assumption uh, kicks in because this d plus e is uh, smaller or equal uh, than m by our assumption. So this is not zero. It cannot be zero because you are taking too many uh, hyperplane classes. And so the only way, I mean, 
um, is that this d plus e is zero because uh, this was the minimum uh, uh, the, the minimum degree which appears and so it has to be zero and this means that the pullback of all the chain classes of the two bundles are zero in particular if you take the firm chair class of q you are uh, looking at the pullback of the hyperplane in the Plucker embedding. And you are saying that this pullback is trivial. So the map is constant. Um, OK. So what was the uh, fortune of this theorem? Well, this theorem uh, found uh, another application in the theory of uh, vector bundles a few years later. And this was done by Sato. Sato studied uh, uniform vector bundles on the projective space. Uh, what does it mean for a bundle to be uniform? Well, you take the restriction to the bundle uh, to a line. On a line, the bundle splits as a sum of line bundles. If the degrees of these line bundles are the same for every line, you call the bundle uniform. And uh, uh, well, the, uh, there weren't uh, examples of uniform bundles of low rank on the projective space. The first non-trivial one was the tangent. And Sato showed that, well, there is a good reason for, for that because if you take a uniform bundle with a rank smaller than the dimension of the projective space, then you, you, what you get is a direct sum of line bundles. OK, what is the relation of this with the theorem of Tango? It's in the idea of proof of Sato. OK, so first of all, well, we can rearrange our bundle. So our bundle is uniform. The splitting type is the same on every line. We can uh, dualize, dualize and twist and rearrange the splitting type in a way that the first uh, degrees are zero and then they are increasing. And the idea is that the zero part, okay, so let me... So here you have your Pn and you have the point and over the point you have P of, of Ex. Uh, you take a line. On this line, uh, well, you have the projectivization of the bundle, but in particular, you can identify the projectivization of the sections corresponding to the zero summons. So there is, there are some zero sections which are cutting a linear subspace here. Then you take another line and you are cutting another uh, subspace. Well, another of the same, this is the point. In this way, uh, you can associate to the set of lines passing by X, this PN minus one are the lines uh, by X, uh, to every line you can associate a subspace of the projectivization of the bundle over the point. And you get a map from a projective space to a grass bundle. Well, if your bundle is decomposable, the situation is not the one in the picture, but uh, you have the the sections corresponding to the trivial summons, and for every line, you always get the same space. So a necessary condition for the bundle to be decomposable is that uh, this map uh, this map is constant. And somehow, uh, Sato managed to show that under the assumption on the rank, it is also enough to prove that this map is constant. So now the, the result of Tango kicked in uh, to, uh, uh, to um, uh, get the decomposability. Okay, and 
well, this was uh, why uh, Tango's theorem uh, had a lot of follow-up because people started to study uh, uniform vector bundles on other varieties. So, uniform vector bundle on a quadric hypersurface. If you want to uh, follow the path of Sato, you have to take the variety parametrizing lines by a point, which in this case is a quadric, and study a morphism from the quadric to a Grassmannian. If you change the variety, I mean, you have to study uh, morphins from the varieties of, varieties of lines by a point to a Grassmannian. So uh, people try to prove tango type theorems for other varieties. But wh what is the idea uh, that we have seen in the proof that can be uh, uh, generalized to other varieties? Well, uh, why the proof works? Because we find in the Chow ring of the Grassmannian some zero divisors, we pull them back, and we don't have uh, zero divisors in the Chow ring of the projective space. This is, in a nutshell, the idea of Tango's proof. And, well, there were many papers uh, on Quadrix, Cacciensato, Grasmanians, uh, Guyot, uh, other uh, fano manifolds, for instance, Hermitian symmetric spaces. I, I did that with uh, um, Roberto Munoz and Luis Solaconde. And here I have to apologize, I didn't say it at the beginning. What I'm presenting is a joint work with them, so Roberto Munoz, which is at the Univers Universitat Politecnica de Madrid, and Luis Solaconde, which is here in Trento. Okay, but there were these uh, scattered results, and somehow they were summarized with this uh, definition and uh, as a consequence, the theorem given by Pan. Uh, which uh, gave this definition of good divisibility up to some degree, which says uh, essentially that a variety has good divisibility up to a degree S if it doesn't have zero divisors, which uh, would degree add up to this uh, degree. And okay, and then you just use Tango's proof and you get. Uh, if a variety satisfies uh, as good divisibility big enough, then you just use the same proof to prove that there are no morphemes to Grasmanias. Uh, okay, this is good, but it's not the best possible solution uh, because, well, you can, we can try to understand it looking at quadrics. If we take so what is the good divisibility of quadrix? It, it's uh, very different in the case of uh, odd, oops, what happened? Of, uh, in, sorry, this is not very good. In the odd case and in the even case. Because in the odd case, um, all the Chow groups are one dimensional. The cohomology is basically the same as the, the one of the projective space. So the good divisibility is the dimension. But when you, lo you look at an even dimensional quadric, uh, there all the Chow, Chow groups are one dimensional except for the middle one. The middle one is generated uh, uh, by uh, two. Um, linear subspaces uh, of dimension enough. You can think of Q4, which is G13, and you have the two different kinds of planes, the one parametrizing lines by a point, the one parametrizing lines in a plane. You have two different families of planes, or in general, two different families of linear spaces of dimension, half of the dimension of the quadrant. And they, they, they uh, are different, they, have, they determine different classes in the Chow ring. But if you take the difference and you cut it with an hyperplane, 
you get two linear spaces of dimension one less. But in dimension one less, all the linear spaces are equal. So you get this. Uh, you get this. Uh, this equality. So you have something of codimension one and something of codimension uh, m over two. The product is zero. So you are good only uh, up to m over two, which is a big difference. But the behavior of quadrix, well, it's hard to believe that the behavior is going to be that different. And in fact, uh, also for even dimensional quadrix, the, the bound is very similar to the one uh, for uh, odd dimensional quadrix. This was the result of Cacisato. So uh, we see that in this case, the good divisibility does not give, uh, well, we don't know if it is the optimal bound, but at least it's far from being uh, the optimal bound. Uh, so to improve this, uh, let's go back again to the proof of Tango's theorem. And I, I will uh, propose a slightly different proof, but which is, if you want, a geometric version of Tango's proof. OK, uh, so I call n the minimum integer for which there is a non-constant morphism from PM to the Grassmannian. And I want to show Tango's theorem so that n is at least m. And to do this, I uh, look at two very particular sub-varieties of the Grassmannian. One, sigma p is the variety parametrizing linear space in bus passing by a point, and sigma h is the variety parametrizing linear spaces contained in an hyperplane. We can easily compute their dimension, so and, and so the sum of their codimensions, which is m plus one. But well, clearly, if the point is not contained in the hyperplane, there is no linear space passing by the point and contained in the hyperplane. So the intersection of the corresponding cycles is zero. Well, this is not very different from Tango because these two cycles are the top chain classes of the bundles of Tango. But I, I'm, I'm not looking at the vector bundle, I'm just looking at these sub varieties. Okay, uh, pull them back, write the pullback as a multiple of the suitable power of the hyperplane. I reported, I have this product which is zero. In our assumption, h to the n plus one is not zero. So either A is zero, so the pullback of sigma P is zero, or B is zero and the pullback of sigma H is zero. This means that the image of the projective space in the Grassbanian, which I call M prime, either does not contain points, uh, does not meet sigma P or does not meet sigma H. Well, up to a uh, duality in PN, the, the two things are the same. So let me assume that uh, it does not contain uh, linear spaces passing by P. And OK, so we have our, our point P, an hyperplane. I have linear, a linear space not passing by P. I can do a linear projection and send it to a linear space contained in an hyperplane. And this is a map which is in the Grassmannian is a rational map, is not defined in the linear spaces passing by P. But the image of our map does not meet this indeterminacy locus. So we get a well-defined map from the projective space to a smaller Grassmannian. And the fiber of this map are affine spaces. So if this map is constant, the other map is constant. And this is constant because we assume that n was the minimal integer for which we had a non-constant integer. OK, so what, what uh, uh, does this 
proof tell us? Well, what we did was uh, we take the pullback of two effective Schubert cycles in the Grassmannians, the sigma p and the sigma h, uh, disjoint. Uh, so here the, 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 the key uh, word is effective. So let's refine the idea of Tango's proof in this way. Why we don't have morphisms from PM to the Grassmannian under some assumptions? Because we can find effective zero divisors in the Grassmannian and pull it back to the projective space, and there there are no effective zero divisors. I, being in a Grassmannian on which there is a, a group which acts transitively, uh, zero product of effective cycles means that you can find disjoint representatives. You, you can move the cycles with the action of the group. So you can, you can think of, I, I have two disjoint cycles and I pull them back. Two effective disjoint cycles and I pull them back. Okay, so we replaced the good divisibility definition with the definition of effective good divisibility, which was just uh, add effective in the assumption on the cycle. I mean, change the definition is easy. Uh, the other part is to show that, well, th this works better. And clearly we have the same kind of theorem, but this, you know, I, I want to convince you that you can do something better with this uh, effective uh, good divisibility. So, well, we will try to do something better in two ways. Compute the effective good divisibility of varieties, so uh, get tango type results for maps to Grassmannians. But now, it's time also to change the target, not why gra only Grassmannians. So we will try to study maps between the rational homogeneous spaces and understand when we can say that there are only the constant maps by uh, using this kind of argument. Why rational homogeneous varieties? Well, we have to to compute a fine invariant of the Chow ring. So we need varieties for which uh, the Chow rings are very well known. And this is the case for the rational homogeneous varieties. The first uh, step, this is something that I did with a student of mine, was to compute uh, the effective good divisibility of a Grassmannian using Schubert calculus on uh, Grassmannians. And we found that the good divisibility is the same for every Grassmannian of a fixed projective space. It depends only uh, on the dimension of the ambient uh, variety. And this is, this has a, well, a surprise, at least for me, it's a bit a surprising corollary. Well, the surprise was that this was not known before. Uh, that if you have a Grassmannian of some projective space PM and the Grassmannian of a smaller projective space PN, you don't have any maps between uh, from the first to the second, except the, the trivial ones. And well, this is uh, Tango's proof plus the computation of the effective good divisibility, which in this case is one more than the good divisibility. So actually, we, we get something. Uh, better. Okay, so the project, next project was uh, go for the rational homogeneous varieties. Well, start with the one of classical types. We are only uh, leaving out a finite number of cases. Uh, and uh, so we started with, with those. Uh, I will recall what they are uh, in a moment. With, with the aim of describing, uh, compute the effective good divisibility, but also try to understand what are the first cycles for which this space. So uh, the biggest, if you, if, you, uh, if you think of the sum of the dimensions, 
biggest pair with zero intersection. And since we are on a relational homogeneous variety, we can say disjoint. Because well, the effective the good divisibility is important from the, for the source variety. But to try to prove uh, uh, tango type uh, theorem when the target is another variety, in, in the Grassmannian case, we, we use, the, use the pullback of sigma p and sigma h. If we want to change the variety, we have to use the pullback of something else. So we, we need also to understand what are the guys that we can pull back uh, to get bounds. So this is what a maximal disjoint pair is. Uh, a, a pair of sub-varieties uh, such that the corresponding cycles have zero intersection, or you can think of disjoint sub-varieties, such that the sum of their dimension is the maximal uh, possible uh, in disjoint pairs. Well, and with this language, the sigma p, sigma h is just a maximal disjoint pair. Okay, for today's talk, I decided to stick with uh, rational homogeneous varieties of type A for simplicity, then I will uh, explain what, what's known in the general case. And what are rational homogeneous varieties of type A? They are flag varieties of linear subspaces in a projective space. So let, let me recall briefly how this is constructed. <coughs> well, we fix our projective space, ambient projective space, PN. Uh, we call EI the coordinate points. Uh, we call delta uh, the set of the first n uh, integers, and I is just any subset of, of this delta. Basically, I is determining the dimension of the linear spaces which we are taking in our flag. So uh, we, we construct these uh, linear spaces which have dimension uh, AI minus one. W what I want to say is that when you choose a subset of delta, you, you are choosing the type of flag that you want to consider. And you can choose any sub any non empty subset and you will have a type of flag and then a variety of those flags. Okay, so you 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 have your fixed uh, flag constructed with the coordinate points. Uh, there is an action of the group PGN, PGL n plus one on these kind of flags, which is transitive. Uh, you take the stabilizer of uh, the flag is the what is called the parabolic subgroup, which are matrices of a certain shape and you take the quotient. The quotient is the uh, rational homogeneous variety which parameterize uh, flags with the dimension, uh, dimensions determined by the, the, the set of indexes that you chose. So for every i, you can do this construction. And for every i, the uh, corresponding flag variety. And um, my notation is this. I will convince you in a moment that it is a very good notation. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm just then basically I'm putting the AN uh, means we are considering uh, flags in a projective space. And the I is saying what kind of flags we are considering. Well, for every I, this is a fundamental manifold, and the Picard number is the cardinality of the set that you chose. And if you take two subsets, one containing the other, you have a smooth vibration. Well, map is easy to understand. You just forget some of the linear space. You have a long flag and you map it to a shorter flag by uh, forgetting some of the linear spaces. But also the maps, the, 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 sorry, the fibers of the map are flag varieties or products of flag varieties. I, I will have a, an example in a moment. 
And well, if you will take every possible dimension, so we are taking so-called full flex of linear subspaces, then the stabilizer is what is called the Borel subgroup. These, these are the upper triangular matrices, and the corresponding variety is the variety of complete flex. Okay, so for n equal to three, um, these are the possibilities, and there is a way to represent the variety because uh, uh, we take the thinking diagram of the Lie algebra of the group, which is the diagram of type AN. This is why these are called AN something. And you have to choose some set of nodes. So A31 are points in P3, P3. A32 lines in P3, G13. A33 planes in P3, the dual, and so on. And when you mark all the nodes, you have the so called uh, complete variety of complete flex. And the diagrams are useful to understand the, the fibers. So, for instance, if I take the full, well, the full flag and I'm mapping it to P3, the way to understand what the fibers are are look at the nodes which are marked in both, this one, take it out from the upper diagram, and I'm left with this. These are the fibers. So in this case, is a complete flag of type A2. But, well, you can have something uh, disconnected, so let me put more nodes. And say you go to any subset, you go to this one. Okay, so we have to take out this, and we are left with a disconnected diagram like this. Disconnected diagram means that we have a product. This is just P1, and this is A212, uh, a full flag variety. Okay. Good. So what is uh, our result? Well, that for every flag variety of the projective space Pn, regardless of the type of uh, the flag that you choose, the effect of good divisibility is always the same, and it is n. But let me give a rough idea of the proof. These projections that we considered are important because they uh, induce injections of the Chow groups. And then, uh, I mean, if you have two zero devices here, these are injections, you, you will get two zero devices here. effective and effective because you pull them back via vibration. So we have uh, these kind of inequalities. So we want to show that this first guy is at least n, and here, well, we can add the smaller possible guy is take just one index. And we will show that this is smaller or equal than n. Then, for any guy in the picture, the effective uh, divisibility, effective uh, good divisibility, is going to be the same. Well, the second part, the, the Picard number one guys, is easy. Well, actually, we already did it. What are the flag varieties of Picard number one? Are the Grassmannians. And we already uh, showed that the effective good divisibility is at most n, because we produced a pair of cycles for which the sum of the codimension is n plus one, which have zero product. Okay, so this was the easy part. And uh, for the hard part, 
well, we need to understand that. So we, now we are uh, considering the variety of complete flex. And well, we want to co uh, prove this inequality on the effective good divisibility. So how is how can we describe the Chow ring of this variety? Well, this Chow ring has a very nice description in terms of the vial group of the corresponding group, which is just the permutation group. With this group, we can construct uh, some special subvarieties of the variety of complete flex, uh, given an element. Uh, so we have an element of this permutation group. We think of this as the permutation group of the coordinate points, so we can define these uh, spaces by uh, having the permutation acting on the indexes. So we, we construct some, some flag associated to, uh, to the element. And then we, we use the action of the group, well, the action of the, the, the parabolic to move it. And in this way, we construct a subvariety. So for every element of the group, we construct a subvariety, which is called the Schubert variety corresponding to this element. There are many ways to construct the Schubert varieties. This is one. But take home message. For every element of the group, we have a subvariety. And these subvarieties are very nice and very nicely related to the group. Well, the group. Uh, is a Coxeter group. It has uh, the usual presentation as a Coxeter group. Uh, in particular, is generated by n elements. And there is a notion of length in this group. So every element of the group can be written as a product of these uh, basic transpositions. But this can be done in many possible ways. But uh, the minimum number of uh, transpos elementary transpositions needed to uh, write this word is called the length of the word. Uh, and such an expression is called reduced. The, the very nice thing is the that the dimension of the Schubert variety is the length of the corresponding element of the group. And well, uh, if we want, we want to write the co-dimension rather than the dimension, and this is done by using the longest element of the vial group. Every vial group has the longest element. The length is equal to the dimension of the variety of complete flex. If we take the corresponding Schubert variety, we will get the whole variety. And the co-dimension can be written as the length of the longest minus the length of our world, and this is uh, the length of the product. So we can write the code, also the codimension in a very nice way in terms of the group. And why are Schubert varieties uh, very good for our problem? Because if we take the corresponding cycles in the Chow ring, well, they are a basis of the Chow ring. But more than this, they are uh, a basis for the effective classes. So every effective classes, class is a combination of Schubert cycles with non-negative coefficients. And when we take the product of two Schubert cycles, then we have a sum of Schubert cycles with non-negative coefficients. Putting these three things together is saying, you can test the effective good divisibility considering only Schubert cycles, not any effective cycle. It's enough to take Schubert cycles. And what you have to prove is that, in our case, that the product is different from zero if the sum of the codimension is uh, at most n. And, and well, this can be done by using another nice feature of the Vial group, which is the Brouwer order. Two, two elements of, um, well, an element V is smaller than or equal to another element W. If you can write 
a reduced expression of V as a substring of a reduced expression of W. So you can write V and W in many ways, but if you find a way to write V and W such that what you see in V is part of what you see in W, then you have this, uh, you define this uh, relation. And this has a very nice counterpart in terms of intersections of Schubert varieties, namely two Schubert varieties. Well, I have to write here with the W0 V, but it's the same. Every word can be written as W0 V, so it's not uh, relevant. This product is not zero if and only if the corresponding words are uh, related by the Brouwer order. So, our thesis uh, on the good divisibility can be rephrased as uh, a statement to prove about the elements of the Weil group and the Brouwer order. So the, the geometric problem became a completely, completely algebraic problem on these uh, groups. Uh, so, um, well, just, uh, no, I'm running a bit late, so I will skip this waving and sp So how it's done, uh, this, uh, this part, the, the final part of the proof, but I think that, the very interesting part is that the, the geometric problem can be completely translated into an algebraic problem and then well, solved by algebraic means. So I'm skipping this part and because I want to say what, what, is, uh, what we did in general. So I spoke about AN varieties, which are flags of linear subspaces of PN. The other rational homogeneous spaces of classical types are again flags, but flags of linear spaces in, a, in an odd dimensional quadric for the case BN, in an even dimensional quadric for the case DN, and in a projective space but isotropic with respect to a contact form uh, in the case uh, CN. In, in, in each one of these cases, a rational homogeneous variety is obtained by marking some nodes. And if you mark all the nodes, you have the full flag variety. Uh, so, I mean, the first one is points in QN, the second is lines, the, the third, and so on. And if you mark more, you are uh, taking flags. And, the, and here, these are uh, the results. We computed the effective good divisibility. The first one is the complete flag manifold. Well, we got some numbers which are strangely related to the Coxeter number of the Dinkin diagram, but we didn't find a direct relation. It's just some observation. And for the other varieties, well, in cases A, B, C, the effective good divisibility is the same for every variety. In case D, no, the 2n minus 3 is the divisibility of the flag manifold, but there are other D varieties which have uh, a, a good divisibility which is slightly better, which is 2n minus 2. So here it depends on the cases, but we, we know what are the 2n minus 3 and what are the 2n minus 2. And the proof is the same. I mean, you, you still have Schubert varieties. The Weil group is different, but the, the idea is always the same. You reduce your problem to uh, a problem on the Brouwer order in the Weil group. The Weil groups are different, but well, with some adjustments, uh, the proof is the same. Um, the fact, and the, the, the well, surprising thing is that the effective bounds, so the, the maximal disjoint pairs for each variety of Picard number one are again sigma p and sigma h. So linear spaces in a quadric passing by a point, linear spaces in a quadric contained in an hyperplane, and then you, you just take, take the pullback of those to the other varieties. Except for, well, dn1, so let me just say dn1 is q2 
to M. Here, the maximal disjoint pair is uh, lambda alpha, uh, lambda beta, and these are linear spaces uh, of dimension M, which belong to the same family or to the opposite families according to the parity of M. And also in the spin of varieties, we have some different uh, maximal disjoint pair. OK, and, and I'm finishing with this. OK, so now that we know the effective divisibility, what can we prove with this? I mean, if we want to consider morphisms to the Grassmannian, we already have tango, tango steer. But now we can consider morphisms to any uh, rational homogeneous variety of classical type. And the result is, well, uh, the same result uh, that we had before, but with uh, more variety in the targets. If the effective divisibility of M is bigger than the effective divisibility of a rational homogeneous variety of classical type, every morphism uh, is constant. And well, this is this is the easy part. Via the projection, you can reduce to prove the statement only for the picker number one guy, guys. Uh, in the case again, this was the uh, alternative proof of the theorem of tango. In uh, the other cases, you adapt the alternative proof of uh, the theorem of tango. And if we pick rational, if, well, sort of, sort of summary of this when dealing with rational homogeneous variety, if I take any diagram, so let me take this D diagram and a sub diagram. So for if I can take here just this because I'm taking out this. Or I can also take an AN diagram by taking out this. So these are two sub diagrams. And I'm saying that if I choose any variety of the big diagram or, and any variety of the smaller diagram, there are no uh, non constant morphisms. In particular, well, in this statement, there is the theorem of Tango, the theorem of Grassmannian. This is a compact form of summarizing uh, the known uh, theorems. Okay, I think I stop here.